Sparrow Zarabi. Audrey Zarabi. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're talking about your book, Rise of the Prince. You've both co-authored it. And Mum, if you could describe the process of writing this book. Okay, this book has been in process for years now. Um, when I came into the picture, we have a blended family, so both our second marriages. So when I came into the picture, when Pharaoh works with Darish, he tells him stories. And he's been doing this since Darish was a baby. And um, so I've listened to him telling these stories and have been fascinated when I've caught little pieces of the stories. Um, they're in private, so we're not really able to listen to him. So when I do, it sounds quite interesting and they're quite animated. I looked at how Pharaoh and I could do this together. So he would work with Darius and they would work on the characters. And then Pharaoh and I would sit down together and he would basically pace a room and dictate to me and mm -hmm. I would type it up and then we would work and massage it together and come up with the words. And we started writing and it just mushroom and took a life of its own. We weren't really, we didn't think we were authors that we could write anything. And uh, we started in September last year. That's funny. And uh, by November, we had what we thought looked like a book. So for both of us, I think we looked at it and said, well, here we are, we've come together, we care about each other, we care about our children. This is an opportunity to make all our lives better. And we can only bring better things to our lives as opposed to if we didn't take this chance it would only diminish our lives in some way. Darich became very ill a couple years ago we almost lost him to pneumonia right um, and then one of the things that happened in the hospital is that he ended up with a bad sore so over the Christmas holidays he had to stay supine in bed for um, six weeks and through that situation, it just uh, hit home to us that we shouldn't put off things that we want to do in our lives. And these stories are something we want to record. So we weren't sure how we would go about it. So we started off by making audio tapes. So Pharaoh just started, instead of just, you know, during enema times, um, they started creating these stories. And it just, that's how it all started where um, every second week when he was at Pharaoh's, they were creating stories. And Darius is crazy about sound effects, and it was like, give me more sound effects, give me more sound effects. And I think, I don't even think Pharaoh realized how much of a natural and how mm -hmm. exceptional he is um, at storytelling. And I think it sort of morphed or progressed over time that Darius became more involved and he was creating more characters, uh, more voices, and more sound effects. But we are two different sides of the same coin. You kill for greed and suffering, but I stand. I kill for love and justice. Something that you have seemed to to forget. Darius had mentioned to me a few times um, that he didn't like his body, that he wished he could walk. Um, and I think since he's been doing the stories with his dad, he, I haven't heard him say it. Um, he sort of accepts that uh, he is who he is and that he can accomplish anything that he wants to. It doesn't matter if he's in a wheelchair or if he can walk. He sort of, um, I guess like the book says, it's, it's his garment and he knows that he can accomplish so much more. It doesn't matter what his limitations are. And the other thing that Dorish has that this book is tells you, look in every person for goodness, regardless of how bad you think that person is. There is somewhere in deep, buried under thousands of kilometers of <laughs> negativity, there is a small amount of love. And that where he's digging all this to get to that love. He doesn't see anything negative. All he sees is that love that buried within all those dark thoughts. Basically, my mommy and my dad were mostly me. I don't think they want 
it's too, you know, um, it's too, um, never, never give up. That is the message to all of, to all of you people that is searching for a dream. Never give up. Puts, puts every and and trust me. If you give it your, I trust me, people. If you give it your, if you give it your, your all, who knows? Your dreams will not might will come true. Um, just like with other people, there are ways where he is like way ahead of the rest of us also right so he's uh you know he's differently abled he is so compassionate right um and so incredibly accepting he is he's full he's he's big with you know love and and accepting and um like if he ever hears me on the phone talking to somebody, one of our friends, and they're always his friends as well. Um, no matter what's going on, let me talk to them. I'm going to make them feel better. That's all that matters. I'd say that he's brought a lot of positivity to my life. Um, I find that, you know, even if I'm heading to meet up with him and I'm stressed, grumpy, not in the best of moods, all it takes is sort of Darius opening the door with this huge smile. He's always smiling, um, and it's like, oh man. Right, everything's fine, everything's gonna be good. He just brings all of this sort of happiness and lightheartedness to my life. And so I sort of take that on and live my life that way too, I guess, for the most part. Well, there was one scene and I just felt almost like um, I was so much a part of the scene that it was quite transformative, actually. Mm -hmm. The scene when um, they're up on the um, I think they're going to meet the mountain, Mount Damavan, mm -hmm. and um, they're up, they're in this field, him with his his buddy Sam, and they're um, they're they've already met the beings, and then they're up they're in this field and they're touching the grass and they understand or there's this knowingness just from uh, being in this very special place and touching the grass and. It was very special. I felt the specialness of Darish and Pharaoh understanding Darish in that scene. Mm -hmm. Darish has taught me that I have to focus on the spiritual part of me, which I do not see it as a challenge, but I see it as an opportunity to make me to become a better person. Mm -hmm. I am extremely grateful to have him as a son, which teaches me how to see life in from different view. One day, I'm hoping to be uh, touring the um, uh, world, interacting the interacting with people, getting people to, um, you know, not just to attract with me, but also to um, participate on not sign me with my uh, book. And don't worry, I hope to get to, you know, the early degenerates, so. Oh, okay, so you have some goals too. I have many, many gods. He has become my teacher. He has become someone that I can look up to. Someone that if I have an obstacle or if I do have a problem, I think of what Dorish has gone through. And he goes through surgery for many hours he comes out you ask him how do you feel he would say i'm fantastic 
if he falls and breaks his nose, which I have seen he has done, I ask him, how do you feel? Perfect. Then I, I have learned that he looks at everything as beautiful as it can be. He doesn't want to see a little bit blood, a little bit pain, a little bit of sadness, sorrow, all those things stop him from living life. And I have learned from him to live life and love what life it is, mm -hmm. be it good or bad, but just love it.